Hey guys, this is Mike from That's Your Garbage, and this is going to be a Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition, a Dance with Dragons expansion, say that five times fast. Before I show you anything to do with this expansion, let's make it undeniably clear that yes, this video will contain spoilers for the book and the series. If you have not read until the end of A Dance with Dragons, you now have three seconds to stop watching this video. All right, let's start. Firstly, this is not the expansion we deserve, but the expansion that we need. Allow me to explain. This expansion includes a, a set of 42 house cards, a variant six-player scenario that allows for alternate setup. When using the new house cards, you have to remove the other 42 house cards that come with the base game. This means you cannot mix and match, but I'm sure some of you out there will try. And if you do, we'd like to hear about it. We'll get into the cards a bit later. Let's look at the starting positions. Right away, you can see that this setup is quite in your face. On the positive side, it makes combat almost imminent in the first turn, which is not true for the base game. On the negative side, it does not give you too much room to grow, and might direct your path of attack. In my honest opinion, this setup is a welcome sight, and it fixes a lot of problems I have with the base game. Mainly, the Starks having to take Mole Caitlin in the first turn, or being stuck in the north, and Baratheon aren't just able to run rampant in the east in this version. On top of that, House Martell and House Tyrell can't just lollygag and attack all the neutral forces on the bottom of the board. They have a lot of opponents to contend with, especially Tyrell, who owns most of the board. Martell will obviously be locked in combat with them right away, and, a, and an alliance between Baratheon and, and Martell could cause a lot of problems for Tyrell. When looking at the board, FFG did a good job translating the events of the series until Book 5 into Game form. There is very little uncontested area, and I love this. The pressure and diplomacy heats up right away, and this is my favorite part of the base game. This scenario is limited to six rounds, thus the game is shortened quite a bit. Well, as long as the people you're playing with do not take a long time to decide their turns. As a fan of the series, and a diehard FFG supporter, I really don't feel like this was the expansion we deserved. I would have liked to have seen a big expansion, maybe adding the Targaryens, maybe throwing in some heroes on the map, who knows? Something great. I'll leave it to them to cook it up. However, this expansion was definitely something we needed. In my opinion, it takes all the best parts of the base game and hastens it up, so you're not sitting there playing this game for 6 or 7 hours, which I felt was one of the flaws. It's hard to get everybody together, especially 5 other people, and sit there and play a game for 6 hours. Everybody has lives, and it's very difficult. It's not all good news though. Because this expansion goes hand in hand with the series, up to the end of Dance of Dragons, Friends of yours who have not read the books or say that they'd rather watch during the TV series will not play this game with you, which makes it difficult to find five other people who will be able to play this game and not have to worry about spoilers or anything else like that. So that actually limits the amount of people you can play with, which kind of sucks. Now let's talk about the house cards. Before I start, I just want to say that the Tyrell cards and the Martell cards are both on par with the rest. I personally felt this was not the case in the base game. That being said, these new cards can be used with the base game when using the original setup. This is something I have not tried yet, but I do look forward to doing it. We'll start with the Tyrells. You'll notice a few new additions here, and the ability of these cards have improved quite a bit. Paxter Redwine allows you to add two combat strengths for ships, even those ships that are supporting Tyrell in that combat. The Queen of Thorns allows you to ignore text abilities of your opponent's cards, which is really good for bluffing people out. Marjorie Tyrell is the best card in this set, because it grants quite a good defense. Mind you, most of this defense is a deterrent, and you'll be psyching people out. You'll also have to drop a lot of power tokens down, so that this card becomes viable. The final combat of 2 strength for your opponent is a good deterrence for them attacking you. As long as you're higher than them on the Fiefdom track, a knight can defend almost any area. This is a really powerful ability, and it's mainly based in the threat of you actually using it. So try not to use the card too early, or your plans might be foiled. Alright, now let's talk about the Martells. Here's a family that definitely plays the long game, and Doran Martell is actually pretty thematic to the series. For each house card in your hand, this card gains a fortification icon and a sword icon, but suffers minus one combat strike. So here's a card you're only really going to want to use when you know you're going to win, which is what Doran Martell does. He never attacks till he's going to win, but you know that when he does attack, it's going to do a lot of damage. Which, get, which is that extra sword icon is actually really good. So the fortification 
it's pretty good for defense, but I wouldn't rely on that too much. Uh, Quinton Martell is actually pretty good. For each house card in your discard pile, this gains one combat strength, which would be really good for striking a lot of damage all at once, or definitely coming back from a victory you thought you were going to lose. Um, then there's Namira Sand, doesn't really, is just a basic card. This one's pretty good, it makes you move higher up on the influence track. But really, the, the best card here is the big man, and uh, I'll leave that to your imagination. For the Starks, you're going to see a few new faces here. Um, it's a lot different from the set you were used to at the beginning. They're not, there's actually no Starks. So, figure that one out. Anyways, Roose Bolton doesn't look like a vampire anymore, which is pretty cool. I, don't, I didn't understand the vampire thing in the first game. Uh, well, the base game, I guess. Uh, Ramsey Bolton is actually really good. Um, and there's a nice little combo going on with Reek. Uh, so if Reek's in your hand, he gains plus one combat strength and three swords, which is really good. And then when you're looking at Reek, when this guy goes to the um, discard pile, Reek will actually allow him to come back. And then you can get Reek back to your hand if you lost that combat. So if your Ramsey Bolton house card is in your discard pile, immediately return it to your hand. If you lose this combat, you may return Reek to your hand. So it's a nice little back and forth combo going on there. It's very similar to the uh, Roos Bolton to get the Starks back in the first uh, in the base game. So that's pretty nice. Got Damon Dance for me, which is a lot of fun. And then Walder Frey is actually very thematic here. Any support that's granted to your opponent, obviously not by his own units. Uh, will actually have that support turn against him, and that support will be granted towards you. So there you go, Walder Frey at his finest. All right, so moving on to Baratheon, or Baratheon. Poor Stannis actually never gets any love, which makes this card pretty thematic as well. If you're not being supported in this combat, remove all support tokens, including your own, adjacent to the embattled area, canceling any support strength they may have been providing. So if you're not getting any support from anybody, which is how it always is for poor Stannis, uh, you could remove all the support, and uh, you could potentially turn that tide of that battle. Uh, Jon Snow makes an appearance here, which actually really makes me want to play Breath, and he's my favorite character in the series. Um, the ability is, is really fun. It makes you move the Wilding track. Uh, if you win the combat, you can move up or down. To maximum zero. Melisandre, after combat, you may return any house card in your discard pile, including this card, to your hand by discarding any number of available power tokens equal to the printed combat strength of that card. This could be a nice combo you can pull off to get back Stannis pretty often. Um, pretty much how it works, you would dropping, say, four power tokens and you can get Stannis back. So it's a nice combo you can do here. And you could also get Melisandre back as well. So that actually really helps. Uh, some of the other cards, you got the Bastard of Night Song. Sir Davil Seaworth. I actually like his, his printing on this one a lot better. Mance Raider is a really powerful card. Your final combat strength is equal to the current position on the Wilding Threat token. Uh, overall, the Baratheon army uh, or house is definitely best for people who like to attack. Uh, they're very strong. They can be very powerful and they require very little support. So the Greyjoys, once again, have a, a really nice set of cards. Uh, they're really balanced. I thought they were really good in the first uh, game. Uh, Yon Crozet makes it. Asher Greyjoy looks more attractive than just in the show. Um, this card you could have a little bit of fun with. If you win this combat, you may search any Westeros deck uh, for a card of your choice. Suffer the remaining cards and put that one on the top. You get a lot of, uh, I guess you can set the, the future of what's going to happen. Could work in your favor. Uh, this one here, it's a nice little bonus. It's nothing to write home about, I don't think. Um, but the best one definitely is Aaron Dampair. Uh, seems like the Greyjoys always have the single best card. But you may discard any number of your available power tokens to increase the combat strength of this card by any by the number of power tokens you discarded. If you have a lot of money and you're sitting on a lot, of, sorry, a lot of power and you're sitting on a lot of power, this could really stop people from attacking you. Um, it's a nice thing to have, and it's actually really strong. Okay, and lastly, we have the Lannisters. Um, this is a pretty nice set as well. Uh, Maester Kyburn is really good. You, may dis you can discard two of your available power tokens to choose a house card in any discard pile, and he'll gain that combat strength, but you ignore the text. It's a nice little bonus to have for a zero card. So that's pretty good depending on who you're facing and what you want to use. Uh, Marbrand does very similar to what Kevin Lannister did the last game. Uh, Sir is a hoe. Uh, Sir Illyn Payne is really good. Um... If you win a combat, you may destroy one of your opponent's footmen in any area in addition to normal casualties. So you could actually 
disrupt their plans by killing the last footman in another area because you take away their order token as well, which is really good for setting up laid plans for later on. Jamie Lannister's here. Uh, he's got his gold hand right there on the right side. And Kevin Lannister is still alive. So that's uh, interesting. He's only a respectable Lannister in my opinion. All right, well, that's it. That's uh, the rundown for the new Game of Thrones 2nd Edition A Dance with Dragons expansion. It's a really long name. But it's actually really good. I really enjoy it. I look forward to playing more games of it. A little while back, we did a review for the Game of Thrones original game. So if you want to check that out, we'll make it accessible through this video. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below or on our website. Don't forget to check out our website. It's www.thatsyogarbage.com. Uh, we have more Game of Thrones stuff and we also have other types of news stuff. So uh, check us out and thanks for watching.